Monkey D. Luffy is based on God Hanuman. Concrete evidence proves this, and today you will see Dragon and Garp's actual inspiration. God Hanuman can stretch in large parts of his body, comes from a monkey family, and ton of other parallels. The father of Hanuman is Vayu, who is the Lord of the Winds, aka Dragon, and the other father of Hanuman is Kisiri, a chief known for saving holy saints with his fist, aka Garp. Kisiri's wife, which would be Luffy's grandmother, is Anjan who was a celestial maiden. By the end of this video, you will be completely f***ing mind blown because I will easily break down the Monkey D family lineage to you. Today's video is heavily based on a past video of mine about Luffy's real devil fruit. If that interests you, the link is at the top of the screen. With that out of the way, let's get started with Mr. Monkey D Luffy. So there's a Hindu god named Hanuman and he shares tons of similarities to Luffy. Let's note that Hanuman and Sun Wukong are not the same thing. Some scholars say that Hanuman may be the one that inspires Sun Wukong, but there's quite a few differences between the two. But this video is not about Sun Wukong, it's about Hanuman. Now starting with the most obvious similarity between Hanuman and Luffy is the fact that they can both stretch. This is made possible due to the multiple abilities that Hanuman has, but also due to Luffy's devil fruit. The second similarity between the two is the ability to take multiple forms. Hanuman knows the science of Kamarupa, so this is what allows him to alter his appearance. We are led to believe that Luffy has multiple gear 4 forms because of his devil fruit, but maybe it goes deeper than that. The third similarity is that they can both alter their body size. Hanuman alters body size through the science of Kamarupa, and Luffy alters body size through the power of the Gomu Gomu no Mi. Again, I'm led to believe this is because of the devil fruit, but maybe it goes deeper than that. The fourth similarity is that they both have a natural enemy known for lightning and thunder. In this case, Hanuman had an enemy named God Indra who is known for those powers and Hanuman grew immune to them. As for Luffy, he went up against God Enel who was known for thunder attacks and was immune due to his devil fruit countering it. The fifth similarity is the business they have going on with their chest. In Hindu mythology, Hanuman tore open his chest to show Sita and Rama in his heart. Sita was a wife, Rama was a husband. We can relate this to Luffy because he had a hole blasted in his chest by Aka Inu. The husband, Rama, is also considered a supreme being in Hinduism. Since he sits at the heart of Hanuman, maybe this is symbolized in One Piece by having Joy Boy sit in the heart of Luffy. I believe Nika, Joy Boy, and Luffy are all the same person, and I've been preaching this for a while now. But back to the mythology, the wife Sita was born in a royal family but was later kidnapped by Ravana. Ravana was a king of Lanka, Lanka being an island fortress. So in One Piece terms, I'll pitch you this. So Rama, aka Joy Boy, had a wife named Sita, and Sita was kidnapped by Ravana aka Emu. We do know that the current world government took down the ancient kingdom, so therefore Emu was Joy Boy's enemy. Maybe Emu was in love with Joy Boy's wife, but couldn't get his hands on the Ope Ope no Mi to make her immortal. So she ended up passing away, and now he wants to find a new woman to replace her. Another option is that she's still alive in Marijua, but I'm inclined to believe the former. Moving onwards in the mythology, Hanuman lifted Mount Doronagiri. It is said that Hanuman lifted this mountain to save the life of Lax man. In recent One Piece chapters, we learned that Zunisha was Joy Boy's Nakama, and I'm certain that Zunisha has been waiting for Joy Boy's return. I've also said in previous videos that Luffy is going to awaken or become Joy Boy, so I guarantee that Luffy will fulfill the wishes of Zunisha, aka Laxman. With that being said, maybe Joy Boy is based on Rama, and Zunisha is based on Laxman. Now on the topic of Luffy lifting a mountain, there's a few different ways that this can be added to One Piece. It can be metaphorical where Luffy carries his team as well as a kingdom, or it can be literal where Luffy holds Onigashima. Do I believe this would happen? Mm, maybe, maybe not, I wouldn't bet against it or on it, but I have heard that theory previous to even making this video. Upon further research from my first video about Luffy being Hanuman, it turns out that Hanuman burns the Lanka. Lanka refers to the island fortress I just mentioned, ruled by Ravana. I've had several comments from my last video saying this is an awesome parallel to Madame Shirley's prediction of Luffy's destruction of Fishman Island, but I also got comments saying that this might be a parallel to Luffy destroying Eni's lobby, but I want to take this a step further. If Ravana is Emu and Emu rules Marijua, what if Hanuman burning the Lanka will happen by Luffy burning Marijua? It's always been my head canon that the final war would take place at Marijua, so this would easily fit into the story. In more mythology, Ravana was insulted by Hanuman's behavior and ordered his slaves to set fire to Hanuman's tail. As they did that, Hanuman leapt 
stepped away from them with his tail on fire. Hanuman jumped from building to building, setting them all on fire. I believe that this yet again supports the idea that Luffy will burn down Marijua, even if it's in a silly fashion. Just talking about this theory is blowing my mind, so leave a like on the video if you're enjoying. Adding on to Hanuman, there's another Hindu god named Yamadev, and they are the god of death and justice. You know who else is a figure of death? Law, the surgeon of death. In legend, it is said that Yamadev blesses Hanuman with immortality, once again tying in with Law because his devil fruit has the eternal life operation. I believe that Law's eternal life operation is Chekhov's gun, meaning that Oda introduced it into the story to make a substantial plot device at some point. With that being said, many people believe that Law will use this operation on Luffy at the cost of Law's life. If this takes place, then this fits the lore of Hanuman and Yamadev. Another interesting fact about Hanuman is he was unaware of his powers until Jambavan helped Hanuman awaken. Maybe Luffy has a special power relating to Joy Boy and in the coming chapters, Luffy will awaken his devil fruit. Moving on to the father of Luffy, Monkey D. Dragon. Now in Hindu mythology, the father of Hanuman is Vayu. Vayu is a primary Hindu deity and the lord of the winds as well as the deity of the breath. He is known as Anila, meaning air or wind, and Prana, meaning the life force. Behind the lore of God Vayu, there's a lot of emphasis on him with wind. We do know that dragon can manipulate wind to some extent, and whenever he seems to be around, there's wind gusts. So this raises the possibility that Monkey D Dragon is the ancient weapon Uranus. Uranus in Greek mythology is known as the god of the sky, which would have wind-related abilities. Previous to my Hanuman theory, I used to believe that Momonosuke was Uranus. But considering that Vayu lines up with dragons so well, and they have that emphasis on wind, I'm inclined to believe that dragon is Uranus. To add on to that idea, Monkey D Dragon called Ivankov around the time of the Marine Ford War. The interesting part is that Dragon says that his followers are relieved to know he's human after all. I feel like this is a slight hint to Monkey D Dragon's true nature, because this might be a hint to him being Uranus. This would explain why people are relieved to hear that Dragon is a human after all. Now there might be ties between Dragon Dragon, and a special character we've been waiting to see come back, and that character is Enel. So in Hindu mythology, Vayu had a sibling named Indra, which we talked a little bit about earlier. Oda doesn't use real life references one to one, so I believe that Oda's switching this around by making Enel not a sibling to Dragon. It is said that God Indra shared their first drink with Vayu. Maybe at some point, Dragon was friends with Enel and they got to know each other. Remember earlier how I said that Hanuman's natural enemy was Indra? Well, in mythology, Vayu was upset that Indra struck Hanuman, so Vayu responded by sucking all the air around him. This caused Celestials to be frightened and even knocked them off their feet. We haven't seen this violent attack between Dragon and NL yet, so maybe NL returns in the future for the final war. Maybe NL will be on the side of the world government and Celestial Dragons due to his whole god complex. This would trigger Luffy to have a small interaction, a small fight with NL again, but this time Dragon would jump in and complete completely wreck NL. But back to more Vayu lore. He's known as a fighter and a destroyer. He's also known for being powerful and heroic. I admit that these are loose terms, but the world government probably sees Dragon as some kind of destroyer and the countries that he's united as some kind of hero. Another fact about Vayu is he's often classed as one of the 12 divas grouped together as directional guardians. Quite ironic because the commanders of the revolutionary army are known to be directional guardians as well. Karasu controls the North Army, Bello Betty controls the East Army, Morley controls the West Army, and Lindbergh controls the South Army. With that being said, I strongly believe that Monkey D Dragon is based off of God Vayu. Next up is Monkey D Garp. So in Hindu mythology, Hanuman did have two fathers, them being Vayu aka Dragon, and the other being Kisari aka Garp. Again, Oda doesn't do mythologies and references one to one, so what Oda's probably doing here is he's taking the second father, Kisari, and using it as Luffy's grandfather, Garp. So Kisari is known as a male Venara, just like Luffy and Dragon. He's also known for being brave by nature and a chief. I believe this is related to how Garp is a marine, and better yet, the hero of the marines, so it makes sense that he's a chief like Kisari. He prayed with his wife for Lord Vayu to be his son. Remember earlier how we were saying that Dragon is probably based off Vayu? We have to question why Garp would pray for Dragon to be his son. 
Is it possible that Garp wanted his son to be Uranus, maybe to safe keep this from pirates? Looking further into Key City lore, he once found a great monster named Shaba Zadana who was continuously persecuting saints. Key City confronted this monster and hit him forcefully with his fist. There was a great wrestling match and Key City was finally successful in slaying him. Applying this to One Piece is almost one to one with the God Valley incident. Between the victims, the enemy, the savior, and the location, it all matches the God Valley incident. Starting with the monster, Shamba Zadana is a type of demon or goblin. They have the power to shapeshift at will to appear as animals, monsters, or in the case of female demons, as beautiful women. With that being said, can Roxy Zebek be a goblin with shapeshifting abilities? We know of multiple devil fruits that alter appearance, but maybe Zebek took this to another level. Goblins are also known to be short, so maybe that explains his height compared to the other Rock's Pirates members. In the Hindu mythology, the Shamba Zadana slaying took place at a sacred shrine near the shore. The defeat of Zebek took place at God Valley, so maybe that's tying in with the sacred shrine from the mythology. And as far as being near the shore, in the anime we see a lot of boats which implies that Garp fought near the shore as well. More mythology says that Kisidi used to wander around different holy places. This is a bit vague, but maybe this relates to Garp by him visiting Marijua as well as other random isles whenever he seems to be bored. The God Valley incident sounds completely identical identical to Key City in his adventures, so I strongly believe that Garp is based off Key City. Now moving on to the final Monkey D family member, Garp's wife. Now this will be the character that ties them all together. So in Hindu mythology, Anjana was the wife of Kisuri, aka Garp. There are several legends about Anjana, but one says that she was actually the mother of Hanuman, aka Luffy. To keep this simple, we'll just roll with the concept of her being Luffy's grandmother, but if you want to imply or say that she's Luffy's mother, I'm cool with that too. Now Anjana was an Apsara, and the English translation to that is a celestial nymph or a celestial maiden. This could mean that Luffy's mom or grandmother was a part of the celestial dragons. I know that theory has been floating around for a while now, but this theory kind of gives credence to it. Anjana was bored of the luxurious lifestyle and went down on earth to live a regular life. If you remember Doflamingo's backstory, you would know that his father did the same thing. He wanted his family to live a regular life, which Doflamingo wasn't too fond of. So this theme of leaving the celestial dragons has happened before, and I wouldn't be surprised if it happened again. While Anjana was on earth, Earth, she met a monkey and fell in love with him. This monkey was known for fighting lions and she was mesmerized until she married him. We can apply this to Garp because he's a Monkey D member who fought people like Golden Lion Shiki. There's also random pictures of him young riding a lion. Moving onwards, Anjana had a curse placed on her by a sage because of this monkey situation. This could be a case where the celestial dragons were upset she chose to marry a regular man like Garp instead of some high status king. This this fits the god complexes that the celestial dragons have and it would not be surprising to me if this was the case. Furthermore, Brahma felt sorry for Anjana and gave her a solution. He said go to earth and give birth to a divine son who will be the incarnation of Lord Shiva himself and you will be removed from the curse. This divine son she had was Vayu aka Dragon. Is it possible that the celestial dragons knew Garp's wife would give birth to Uranus? Maybe it was prophesized in One Piece? Kind like Shirahoshi, the ancient weapon of Poseidon. She could have decided to not give up her son and let them take advantage of him. I could see a scenario where they would want to imprison Dragon to avoid destruction via ancient weapon power, or even a scenario where they would want to kill Dragon in order to not have that ancient weapon float around in the first place. Her not giving up Dragon could have caused her to be killed or imprisoned in Marijua. It's a common theme in One Piece for mothers to protect their child, Porcus D. Rouge for an example. She held on to ace in her belly far longer than nature allows for the sole purpose of keeping him safe. And coincidentally, they wanted to kill Ace right off the bat, so maybe they wanted to do the same with the dragon. Oda is truly a genius and I trust that he will utilize all these characters to the best of his ability. If today's video really intrigued you, you should watch this video to my side because I explain why Luffy has a special devil fruit, Saru Saru no Mi, Maro Hanuman.